My name is Martin Krebs. I'm physicist and electrochemist. Um, I'm working for Vata for more than 33 years, but now I'm retired. And this is my successor, Nicholas Pluto. Uh, well, in my retirement, I continue uh, to work with printed electronics because I did it for a long time and uh, I support Vata and I am looking for new applications for printed batteries and other printed objects. Printed batteries, it can work? It does work, actually. <laughs> so, hello, my name is uh, Nicolas Bucher. I'm with Varta as the head of Funnel Project, yeah, his successor basically. And uh, we continue the story that he started from research projects now at the doorsteps basically of uh, commercialization. Um, printed batteries, um, as you can see here, is uh, the novel technology that we have at the moment. Microphone. Yes. Okay. And uh, basically, it is um, super slim um, uh, uh, energy source, which can be uh, which can be used in different applications. We have uh, identified. Uh, I mean, in nowadays with the trend for uh, internet, internet of everything, with the trend of uh, ever sensing, uh, basically this device um, is the enabler of such technologies in sports, in medicine, or in uh, basically in tracking and. The device, the, the battery source, is, uh, is designed super slim with a certain capacity, which can be integrated in different shapes, as you can see here. Um, so it's basically um, uh, connected with uh, printed. It's, it can be uh, connected with uh, digital. Uh, um, um, Using so some Wi Fi, exactly, exactly. NFC, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it goes in the shoe. It can it go goes on the patch. Basically, if you, if you with the internet of everything or the ever sensing, mm -hmm. um, with sports trackers or with having um, uh, medical applications for a smart patch, for example, it can be done in any shape to, for example, measure uh, temperature. Can be measured for heartbeat, uh, heartbeat, heartbeat uh, um, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen level. Oh yeah, but so. the main application that we have also identified is, of course, in type of tracking. Um, sensitive good, for example. Think about all the vaccinations that are shipped around uh, the globe at the moment by minus 80 degrees C. Um, to track these, that it has still the same condition as, as uh, initially, it can be uh, equipped with a smart label, power sourced with uh, our... Uh, printed device and in that tracked over the full globe reachable at any time via the mobile network and um, it is designed to be long lasting for the critical time scale of six months or something like that so Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that is the important thing. We, we have to find applications which are feasible, which the customers is needing. Uh, because if we have a kind of market push that nobody takes care of. But if there's a market pull, an application like this uh, LTE uh, label, which can send uh, messages via mobile phone net, this is a um, thing that uh, um, people need constantly looking for new applications where this um, electronics can be used. So uh, how advanced is the printed battery? Yeah, basically, as I mentioned, at the doorstep of uh, bring this into market, we are now collaborating with partners. Uh, at the moment, we are able to produce prototypes of several hundred to be sampled. So um, the, from the technical specs, we, so basically we have uh, now a facility where we can already produce these prototypes. We are uh, at the moment going into the next step of a pilot line. So with that we could produce uh, several hundred <laughs> thousand uh, of this. And um, in collaborating with uh, other uh, partners mm -hmm. who are highly interested in the technology, um, we think we have a uh, market um, penetration around 24 to 25. Um, what does it actually look like? 
Does it look like like it's, this one? Exactly. So it, it is super thin. It can be any shape. But um, let me go maybe back. It is something like that shape. It can be a smaller shape. It can be uh, addressed to any shape as you want. That's uh, that's the um, basically advantage of the printer technology. If you want to keep, uh, equip it to, to your breast in a butterfly shape, if you want to, um, uh, you can make it. You know? The, the and thickness. Is it iron? No, it's zinc <laughs> carbon primary battery. So uh, it is a super cheap material, high capacity, high power application, but only for one discharge. Yeah? That's a huge difference that uh, needs to be considered. That is what we tried in the past very quite often to apply any rechargeable systems that is um, usual in the market, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, but that creates great uh, problems. So uh, in the moment um, it is not possible to print these batteries. But on the other hand we see that uh, there is no market uh, for secondary battery. Each customer asks for a primary battery that has a lifetime enough for, let's say, six months, 12 months, and then it is deposed off. Because our battery doesn't contain any hazardous substances. The zinc is in it and manganese dioxide is in it. So no hazardous substances in this battery. And that makes it green and environmental friendly. What do you say, carbon? Exactly. Thin carbon. Thin, yeah. carbon. thin, thin carbon. Thin carbon. Zinc. 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 Zinc is that. Zinc. Yeah, like yeah. zinc. Like the, ah, zinc. Like the mm -hmm. tin can, something like that, but it's also. Yeah. 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 Basically. Uh, what, what, what is the difficulty of using something like lithium ion or rechargeable on this uh, form factor? Yeah, basically, it would make the whole device more expensive. Uh, as of, we're doing some research in that direction, but um, the lithium ion technology. Um, as you can see, the, from, from the, the markets that we address, we basically want to go in something where you can easily integrate it and easily uh, also don't have to be uh, con have, have to concern about the disposing of it. So uh, a primary source, for example, is here the, the um, energy uh, supply of choice. It makes it much more sustainable because when you have a recharging system, um, we, we would use more hazardous uh, components, which you would need a uh, recharger itself, so which makes it much more complicated. And the whole production process needs to be uh, under, under a certain uh, uh, atmosphere. atmosphere. Conditions. Yeah. The atmospheric no conditions is allowed, uh, uh, has to be in a dry water. room, uh, so this makes it super expensive uh, basically it would be uh, too high of its, of its uh, set uh, for this type of applications and the zinc you find it everywhere exactly I mean uh, zinc is basically everywhere it is in the battery technologies things <laughs> um, 150 years or uh, longer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically there's no shortage in that and, and also carbon. no carbon and manganese uh, dioxide, dioxide yeah. in that sense it's also uh, super available on uh, It sounds like all the stuff I take in my vit vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> no, manganese dioxide is a special material for painters. It is a brown color of, for painters, manganese dioxide. And zinc is um, additive for the health. Uh, you get more healthy if you have a certain dose of zinc. So is it the same magnesium from chocolate you're talking about or different? Uh, magnesium is, magnesium. It, it, it's not magnesium, it's manganese. 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 Yeah. Manganese. Manganese is, is a different uh, element, uh, not to be uh, confused with uh, magnesium. Mm -hmm. yeah. But right. manganese, um, your normal alkaline batteries are basically out of the similar materials. Yeah. So that basically, um, as you, this what, what you can buy at the supermarket, the same materials in the batteries uh, is basically processed here in this device. Uh, it has a, a waterborne process, it has a, a, a water-based electrolyte, um, also a huge difference then, uh, towards uh, lithium-ion batteries, which have organic electrolytes and which are hazardous once they, they have some leakage. Uh. Nice. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, 
your interests in the industry, what, what you've been work, working on before this project or? <laughs> For my case, it is quite easy. When I finished my PhD at uh, TU Klausdahl in 1989, I went to Varta and uh, found that that is the best job that I ever could get. And so far, there was no uh, reason to change. And that until January of this year. And now I'm um, independent battery uh, expert battery consultant and uh, I see many interested uh, partners who want to discuss with me about uh, battery technology. So in all these years Varta did many uh, chemistries, uh, different combinations of yes. technologies? Yes, Varta Micro Battery, that is uh, the company in uh, Elwangen, they have a lot of electrochemical systems, sink air for, head, uh, for hearing aids, silver oxide for watches, they have uh, lithium manganese dioxide coin cells for electronic devices. So uh, I think in the field of portable devices, Vata is a wholesaler uh, and uh, very good in each of these product ranges. And what kind of discussions you can have here at the Nanotechnology Conference? For us, uh, the ISFUE is more interesting because ISFUE is um, uh, part of the nanotechnology uh, uh, conference which uh, concerns uh, the printed electronics. And we see that a printed battery cannot be sold itself. It needs a printed uh, smart object. And vice versa, printed smart objects with a button cell does not make sense. And so far, it is a one-to-one -one relation between printed electronics and printed batteries. And that is what is discussed in ISFUE. Uh, that's the reason why I'm at ISFUE since uh, 2009. Uh, and I like the place, and I like Stergios Logotetides. And many experts here. Many from experts. Many, from many countries, many universities. Many countries, universities, complete Europe, uh, and... Uh, it is very interesting and informative. And it is a chance to, to show what we are able to do. Especially, uh, we have a workshop on Tuesday, um, five um, talks, and I'm uh, leading the workshop. It goes uh, for um, printed electronic go to, goes to market. And uh, that is the most important issue in the moment. How can we bring all these good in, um, uh, investigations, the inventions, the patterns, we, how can we bring it into the market? And here this is the best example basically, right? I mean, you started the research on it uh, around 2012, yeah. so basically 10 years uh, in this research and now we are basically uh, right at the point to uh, have a ready to market uh, sample, basically uh, being in discussions with interested partners from industry and um, so this is to our opinion uh, a really nice success story of one of Vata's product uh, to be. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the trick to get it to mass production? Do you have everything lined up? Do you have the partners who are going to help to do the, is it roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing? Yes, yes. so this, this is basically the goal. At, at the moment, we have it uh, still in the prototype production, but everything is basically already at shelf, uh, prepared that we uh, are in discussions with the interested partners from uh, logistics. Um, we are now going the intermediate step in a, in a uh, pilot line. This will be still sheet to sheet, but we already have um, with our project process engineers um, uh, the plans ready to go road to road. And then um, basically this will uh, be in a scale of uh, millions. Uh, it will change the world. I hope so, or basically <laughs> I expect to. <laughs> Actually, every 8 billion people need batteries need energy, power, solar, wind, all the different power. And so it's like technology that changes the world when yep. you do things yep. in a smarter way that, that is useful for many people. Absolutely. Exactly. And uh, especially for the environment. When I compare the batteries 100 years ago, uh, it has mercury, it has cadmium, it has lead in it. But now all these hazardous substances are removed. 
our battery is really a green uh, product and in so far uh, it, I think it is the best pro uh, product for storing. Uh, there's one comment right here. Uh, more dense batteries are usually more dangerous to handle. I wonder how these batteries react in a crisis. The, pr uh, the printed batteries? It, it's uh, easy to say. I mean, I can punch through it. Uh, still, there will, uh, there's nothing to, to be worried about. I mean, if I, if I go for lithium-ion battery technology, which is really a dense energy, uh, then, of course, I need to fulfill all the safety requirements. But here, basically, I go <laughs> into, into area. Huh? The battery is super thin. It is below uh, 0.8 millimeters, and we are going even lower. Uh, so still here, basically, the energy comes with area. Huh? So the, the capacity is per square centimeter. Mm -hmm. And as, it, uh, as you already said, um, from, from the, from the um, substance, substances used, the chemicals used, they are uh, environmentally benign. Um, we have a water-based uh, electrolyte. So basically, uh, uh, comparing to lithium-ion batteries, if they get in contact with atmosphere, with ambient atmosphere, with water-based atmosphere, they will react, but uh, the primary mm -hmm. battery doesn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you got everything figured out, everything lined up. Okay, thank you. I mean, we will further develop and decrease it uh, the the capacity. We are, but now we're basically at the at the at the critical point where we see uh, we are ready to to partner up and uh, to bring it uh, into the world. And if people have new ideas, uh, what they want to do with this. They can contact you? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, please uh, look it up. You can find it uh, printed batteries at the WAPA, uh, WATA homepage. Um, there's, uh, he can easily mm -hmm. connect uh, with us uh, to discuss further applications. And it's just now is the time. That, that's what Martin, uh, Martin said. We, we, we see a huge market pool because the development of um, of uh, the electronics, of printed electronics or the chip industry. Uh, it uses less energy, it gets smaller and smaller, and we are getting more and more connected in our daily life. I mean, we're getting connected with health trackers, we're getting smart patches, we're getting uh, Internet of Things into Internet of Everything. And here, basically, this is uh, a nice uh, piece of, um, of uh, ingredient which will support this because all of it needs an energy source. I did yeah. a video with the, uh, about the ARM devices and uh, the, kind of like the chairman of the company that owns ARM talks about trillions of IoT devices. They all need batteries. They yes. all need batteries. You can't yes, run do. them without. They do. Yes. If you want to so be independent, batteries. If, if you want to stay independent, you need a battery. Yeah. I mean, for each application, you basically have a certain type of battery useful. So the lithium-ion battery technology is very useful in certain applications, but in others mm -hmm. we see this battery also mm -hmm. uh, very important to fill the gap and being in that sense even more environmental friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, recycle, recycling? It's, uh, we already use a huge share of recycling material already on production and it is recyclable at the end as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for these batteries, type of batteries, there is a recycling concept is available. It's the same concept as for manganese dioxide batteries, alkaline batteries, which are in uh, product uh, in um, in every supermarket. So we can use the same uh, uh, recycling processes as these under other things, manganese dioxide batteries. So that is quite easy.